Hello everyone. Today we're going to walk through a simple tutorial of how to use some of the basic controls inside of Microsoft Visual Studio .NET library and we'll go over some of the basic programming concepts like variables and how we can use these variables. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is open up my designer. There's a shortcut Shift F7 that also works. And my own personal preference is to have the designer next to the code. So I'm going to open up the code. I'm right clicking on the form here to get that. So here I have two tabs. I'm going to pull this guy out. I'm holding down mouse one, dragging it over here. So now I have both my code and my designer tab open. I'm going to shrink my designer. Just playing with some of the settings. So what we'll build today is a very basic point of sale system. Something you might see a grocery store clerk use. They simply punch in some information into the cash register and get the total out. So we'll build something that mimics that. I'm going to drop a couple of labels on here. So we have two labels. I'm going to drop a pair of text boxes. If you can't find it, you can always use the search. There we go. Text box. Let's drop a pair of text boxes on here. And let's drop a nice little button. So now we have all the controls in place. These should look very familiar if you've filled out anything on a website. These work the same way or in a program too. So these labels are as they appear. They contain text and they kind of describe what we're trying to build here. So the first thing I'd like to build is let's collect two pieces of information from the user. Let's collect uh, an item price and number of items. So these labels we're not going to do anything other than kind of guide the user with this information. These text boxes will take input from the user. So I'm going to rename them. It's very good practice to rename your text boxes. Text box one will be renamed text box item price. And text box two will be renamed text box num items. So we've renamed the text boxes item price num items. Let's rename our button. Remember, the name is different than the text, even though they match. Very important detail. Button, let's name it button calc. Kind of simplifies it, but we'll name the text something a little more user friendly. So we'll call it button calculate, call it just calculate. I'm going to 
play with the optics of this a little bit while we're still setting this up. I like how that looks. Everything's nice and centered. Okay, we have our controls set. We've created some labels to describe what the text boxes are. We renamed our text boxes to be logical so that when we start programming, it makes more sense what we're working with. And we have a button, which is going to be the event handler. It's going to trigger all of our code. So I can write the function right away if I want. But if I double click, it auto populates my button click event. So now when I click this button, this code will run. So if I double click, it auto populates, which is very convenient. If I wanted to do that manually, I'd have to go, I'd click on the button, and I'd click on this lightning bolt that says events. And then I would double click in here. Because you see there's a lot of events. There's the click event, plenty of events. You can play with these on your own. Let's continue with our button click. So, the first thing we need to do is define some variables. Let's define our variables here. I'm making a comment. This code does not run because it has these two forward slashes. So, first let's create some variables. These are going to capture the data inside our text boxes. They're going to store that data. So item price will be, let's create a double. A double is a variable type with decimal places. Let's create an integer for num items. And let's create a double for the total. So these, these will be our three variables. Item price, what we put in this box, will be assigned to item price. Num items will be assigned to this with the user plugs in here. And total will be the math that we perform on these two. So now let's get the data entered by the user. So we're going to say item price equals, now this is how our naming convention from earlier can be helpful. Right here, this is what we want. That name that we put in for this text box earlier is what we want. So here we have pulled that information. We've said we want to grab what's in the text box here, and we want the text from it. The red underline indicates that we still have more to do. So what can we do here? Well, the error that we're receiving says right here, cannot implicitly convert string to double. So to fix that error, we need what's on the left-hand side, the data type here. So we have two variables. We have, we have variable types here. There's a double, an integer. So this is a double variable type. Here, this is a string variable type. So we need to convert the string variable type to a double. And that is done very simply here. With double parse. And now we don't have the red underline, meaning we can assign this variable. 
Now we will do the same for this text box. So this name right here. So now we've taken the values of what's inside these text boxes and put them into our variables. So we've collected the data. Next, let's calculate total. And this will be simply item price. Shift 8 is the asterisk. This is a multiply in computer code. We want to multiply the price times the numbers. And then let's display the result like we did in the previous example. So we'll just do a message box, show. And here we need to enter a string. Total is. Now let's take this total item and put it in here. So we should be. Okay, it's doing an automatic type conversion for us, but what is good practice, this is a double. We need to convert it to a string. I would have expected a red underline, but Sometimes the computer program is smart and it'll do it for you. But this should be enough to calculate our item price and let's run the code. So here we have item price. Let's say we have a an item that's three dollars and fifty cents. Let's say we have two items. We would expect a result of seven. And notice how that wasn't really the format we might expect. We want to use something that might look more like a dollar value. So I believe that is denoted what we can put inside of this two string argument is it'll convert this number to something that's a little it, it cr creates better formatting so now we have some nice formatting on our number by adding this this letter C with double quotes so this is a very basic program to create a point of sale, calculate a number, a calculated total based off of an item price and a number of items. That will conclude today's tutorial.